questions on that last course. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. literally not on. <laughs> Sorry, I was handed it, I kind of ran with it. Okay, now can everyone hear me? Sure. Okay, cool. Well, as I said, I'm Juliet Simpson from the University of Virginia, and so this is my talk. Um, just to give you some background, um, I know as engineers we have a tendency to look for the fastest, best, most efficient technology, and today I'm going to be asking us to kind of stop and think a little bit about the economics and the value of those technologies. So if we start by thinking about uh, the power output over time of a typical renewable system, for example, looking at wind, uh, the problem that we always face is that this output is variable. And so the value to the grid or to me as a consumer of this type of output over a few days is very different than the value of, say, something that's baseline and steady, like old school nuclear power, or something that's able to load follow, like a gas turbine. These all have very different values to the system, but if you are designing, for example, a wind turbine, the metric that you're gonna be using to design this isn't gonna take into account these different values. You're usually gonna be using something like the levelized cost of energy, or LCOE. This is pretty standard for designing different types of energy systems. This takes into account your annualized costs and divides them by your annual energy production. So for example, these three technologies could all have very similar LCOEs potentially, depending on where you're putting them in, but they all have different times of, they all have different production times. And that's really not taken into account in this metric. Now, I'm not the first person to say that this is an issue with the system. Uh, the Energy Information Administration has proposed that we use something called LACE, or the Levelized Avoided Cost of Energy instead. This looks at your annual market value of energy and then divides that by your annual energy production. And so they would have us look at this as a net value. So this would be your LACE minus your LCOE. Or you can really think of that as profit, which is revenue minus cost. And so one way to visualize that is to look at this landscape of your LCOE and then LACE, where when you're in the green, you have a positive net value, you're making a profit. When you're in the red, you have a negative net value, you're losing money. And so just decreasing your LCOE is not always enough to ensure that your new technology is gonna be profitable. The issue with using Something like LACE, though, is that it typically requires a lot of complex model inputs. You need to be thinking about things like capacity value, maybe. You need to think about um, having hourly spot price data that you can predict out into the future. And those are all pretty difficult for someone like a renewable system designer to really factor into their models. So the beginning of the research that I'm working on really started with this paper that I read by Von Roon and Hubber looking at modeling spot market pricing with the residual load. For, so for those of you who don't know, the residual load or residual demand is the demand that's left over once you've taken out renewable energy. So what they found in this paper is that they found a linear trend between residual load and normalized spot market prices um, on the European Energy Exchange. They looked at a few different years of data and they found R squared values between about 0.5 and 0.8, depending on the year, which I know is pretty low for saying that something has a linear trend, but if you think about all the different things that go into affecting spot market prices, that's really a fairly high correlation. So, Altogether, this led us to our objectives. Um, we wanted to move beyond LCOE while still maintaining the ease of use of LCOE. So it's still something easy to calculate, but they might integrate other things like time of generation. And we're really targeting renewable system designers. So not someone who's looking at a big grid scale, but rather if you're designing a wind turbine, a solar panel, something that you can implement there. <coughs> 
Inspired by that paper by Von Roon, um, we pulled in data from around the world looking at hourly spot market prices and demand. So shown here, we have three different regions that we pulled in. Um, first is PJM, that's the mid-Atlantic region in the United States. The next one is Queensland, Australia. And then the third one is Ontario, Canada. And for each of these, we fit a linear trend line. Um, we found, once again, fairly low R squared values, um, but we're still feeling like maybe a linear trend is reasonable for us to be thinking about this data. Um, now, we did note, though, that each of these have a different slope that defines this data. And so we were trying to decide what could explain the fact that these slopes are different in different regions. And the correlation that we ended up thinking is fairly significant is the relationship between renewable energy penetration or the percentage of renewable energy produced in a region, um, percentage of total energy, um, and M value, which is what we're calling that slope value. And so we see this positive linear correlation between the two, which we think is possible as uh, a reason that some areas have a higher slope in that price-demand relationship than others. So once we have a relationship between price and demand, we want to think about how can we model demand. Uh, so one of the big benefits of working with demand is that it's fairly standard that you have seasonal trends um, that are observed regularly in different areas. And so you, we ended up uh, looking at PJM data once again over a few years. We averaged summer data, winter data, and spring and fall data, and found these regular curves that you can identify. Now, we have compared these here with one randomly chosen week of spring, fall, and winter data, and you see that generally um, an average curve does a pretty good job of predicting what the demand is going to be on any given week. And so you can string together a bunch of these standard weeks to create a whole year worth of standard demand. And this is a pretty easy way to then predict uh, demand for a year in a region. So bringing that all together, we have this linear model that we propose that relates price through this price demand slope, which would be regionally dependent, to residual demand, or demand minus renewable energy. We solved for the constant in this equation on average. Um, all of these are non-dimensional values. And so we, in the final iteration, um, have decided that uh, Q prime is the average, sorry, is the variation of renewable generation about the mean. And most of the regions that we're looking at right now have fairly low renewable energy penetration. Uh, so the equation that we're working with right now, we've decided that we can ignore that variation as random noise. But we know that when we have it built into these equations that once renewable energy penetration increases in a lot of these regions, uh, we can factor that back into the model and start to account for that as well. In order to prove how well this linear equation works, first we need some data to work with. Uh, so we pulled in wind data from off the coast of Virginia, and we applied to hourly wind data, we applied the NREL 5 megawatt uh, wind turbine reference turbine power curve. It's a pretty standard reference turbine that's used for wind analysis. We also pulled in data from the UVA solar array. And so you see here we have wind and solar data. These are an example week of summer and winter compared to uh, demand. You see that wind tends to generate pretty randomly. It doesn't really correlate or anti-correlate with demand. However, solar has strong correlation with demand every day. In order to really check how well our linear model was working, we found the easiest thing to apply was the value factor. So value factor looks at your average renewable spot market price and divides that by the average spot market price uh, in general. And so you really get an idea for how much is your renewable technology making in spot market prices compared to uh, the general um, like baseline technology. So first we applied value factor using real spot market price data. And we find using real spot market price data that wind has a value factor pretty close to one. And that makes sense. Wind has a fairly random production, and so you expect it to be pretty close to one. And then solar has a value factor greater than one. Also makes sense. Solar tends to correlate with times of high demand. Now, uh, then we apply this using our linear model to real demand data. And we see a little bit of error show up, but still, it does a pretty good job. And finally, we apply this using our linear model with modeled demand data. 
and we still find relatively low error. It seems to be doing a good job of modeling value factor. Um, we then have applied this uh, to the next year worth of data and still found less than 5% error for calculating value factor for wind and solar in the region. One concern that we did have was what if uh, the value factor, what if we're Excuse me. Uh, what if we're a little bit off on M value? What if M value changes by region, but also I have some amount of error in calculating it? How does that affect the value factor? Um, we do find that for wind, having uh, the M value be a little bit different does not have a significant change. Um, for solar, it is more significant, so that's something we have to be aware of. Um, one interesting thing, though, that we noticed once we kind of started to plot these things out is uh, using this linear relationship, you can start to think about the valuation of things like if I had wind production in a place like Ontario, which has in value that's pretty high, around four, if I were to change that wind production to more of a solar type schedule, so producing no different power, I'm just changing when the power is produced, I could increase my value factor by about 50%. And so that's a huge increase in the value of this energy I'm producing and the revenue I'm getting out of it uh, without producing any more energy. So now we have this linear model. What do we want to apply it to? So we have two different uh, metrics that we're proposing that could be used in different schemes uh, in, with different scopes. The first one is lace simplified. This one takes LACE, as I talked about in the beginning, and kind of scales down what it's looking at and applies this linear model. So now we're looking at annual market value from energy produced and dividing that by annual energy production. And so you're finding that market value based on uh, your modeled spot market price throughout the year and then some generation data over the year. Uh, this would be useful in particular if you want to be able to compare to LCOE directly and calculate net values. And then the second metric would be called the cost of valued energy, or COVE. Uh, this looks at annualized costs and divides them by annual energy production weighted by price. Uh, so this one is a little bit more similar to LCOE. It might be a little bit easier to integrate into people's current LCOE models. And so you take your sum of your costs and then you're dividing them by generation, which for every hour is weighted by what is the spot market price that you're predicting at that time. So in conclusion, uh, LCOE alone is not an adequate metric for us to be designing renewable energy systems. We need something that moves beyond that. Uh, this linear price demand model is fairly accurate and we feel like is a good way to get first approximations um, during the design process for engineers of what is going to be the value of their system. We're proposing two different methods for applying this, both lace simplified and cost of valued energy. Lace simplified is particularly good for integrating with net value. Um, one issue that we do see with it is that we may need to include capacity credits for really a full valuation of the system, which will make this more complicated. On the other hand, Cove is much more simple and easy to calculate and would be particularly good for optimizing a renewable system design, such as a wind turbine, solar panel, or something with storage added into it. And so we'd like to see as the next steps using one or both of these metrics in order to optimize a renewable energy system with storage integrated and see what kind of results that we get. And yes, thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes. Yes. One and a half question more. From a physicist okay. perspective instead of an engineer. So if I look at your uncertainty when you did your linear regression, yes. I can take that uncertainty into the equation and do error propagation, mm -hmm. and then I can calculate the uncertainty of these values. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious what you, if you've looked at the uncertainty given that. So we haven't gone back in and, um, and looked at the error propagation yet, but that is something that we're aware of. We're essentially concentrating our error into uh, our slope term, and we know that, that, that we're, we're shifting error around kind of, and, and that we're not taking it out of the equation necessarily. Um, and so we know that in the end that there will be uh, things that we need to account for there, but we feel like as a first approximation that it is still a good step in the right direction. But thank you, that is something for us to look forward.
Great. So, point. so I'll, I'll ask the next presenter to upload his presentation, and then we can take one more question here. Oh, yeah. I can still ask in the meantime? Yeah, yeah, sure, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So yes. really important topic. I mean, you know, LCOE is a great metric for simplicity, but it doesn't take into account uh, some of the real things, that, you know, real value of, of renewable systems integration as a whole. I'm interested yes. in your thoughts. So the levelized cost of flexibility is not something that I have heard of. Um, I have done a pretty extensive lit review, though, on what are kind of the different metrics that are out there in the system right now. Um, the main ones, um, and I have been kind of in talks with some people at NREL as well and on what they kind of see as the up and coming new metrics. Um, system LCOE is really one of the biggest ones. Leon Hoth, who is in uh, Germany, I believe, um, is really kind of the pioneer on a lot of these things, that he has done a lot of great work on how do you think about valuing different systems and the effect of adding renewable energy not just to uh, that system but to the entire grid. How does it affect, for example, your, um, your base load capacity and your backup, your running spinning reserves, things like that. Um, most of these, though, all require fairly complex models to think about the effect on the bigger system. And so what we really feel like is still missing is something that you could use um, quickly in your design process and that doesn't require such uh, intense computational power. Yeah, and if you want to follow up, I'm happy to send you those reports. That would be great. Thank you.